In the fallacy called affirming the consequent, you deal with an implication between two propositions, and you treat this implication as if it was an equivalence. To be able to spot it, to understand that, you first need to have in mind the structure of a modus ponens argument, which is a perfectly valid argument. The normal form of modus ponens is the following. If P then Q, P is true, therefore Q is true. Let's take an example. If the dog sees a burglar, he barks. There's a burglar in the house, therefore the dog is barking. That is perfectly correct. Now let's look at the fallacious version of that. Uh, there's a corresponding propositional fallacy. If P then Q, Q is true. Um, therefore, P is true. This is wrong. This is not the right order. Let me show you with an example. If the dog sees a burglar, he barks. He's barking, therefore, there's a burglar in the house. Well, not necessarily. He could be barking for other reasons, and you exclude those reasons. One of the most classical examples given all around the globe, is the wet street. If it rains, then the street is wet. The street is wet, therefore, it means it rained. Well, it is really lucky, yes, but is it, it's not a necessity. There are other explanations that you cannot rule out that quickly. For instance, I don't know, someone cleaned the street. Why do we call it affirming the consequent, by the way? Well, the term consequent is the name of the second part of a conditional statement. The one that usually follows um, then, if P, then Q. Q is the consequent. If it rains, then the street is wet. The street is wet is the consequent. For an example involving data analysis, let's take the coronavirus for a change and talk about lethality rates among different groups of people, like the German and the French people. By lethality rate, we mean the proportion of infected people that die of the virus. There were quite significant differences at the beginning of the pandemic between Germany and France. So some articles, some articles were dedicated to the topic. So here is how it goes. If the Germans have a better immunity than the French, then they will display lower lethality rates in average, on average. We observe that the lethality rates are lower in Germany, therefore, Germans have a higher immunity, a better immunity. This is a propositional fallacy. It could be partly because of that, but there could be other reasons, other causes, like the efficiency of the healthcare system, the number of beds available in hospitals, and even testing policies, and so forth and so on. Okay, so affirming the consequent is pretty easy to spot. I encourage you to try to dwell a bit more on propositional fallacies, and notably about denying the antecedent, which is pretty similar in the structure and gives you the opportunity to learn about other forms of arguments, such as modus tollens. Let's see that in another video.